That's a gen, yeah. <laughs> Squid Game is a South Korean Netflix series which has taken the platform by storm. It is currently their most viewed show, but under the cool costumes, violence and innovative games, have we missed the main point of the series? Although I haven't watched the series, researching the concept and watching the YouTube summaries has proven fascinating. Why? Because keeping an eye on the best-selling book, the viral video, or the most watched series is a good indicator of our collective psychology at any given moment in time. This dystopian series revolves around a contest where 456 players, all of whom are in deep financial debt, risk their lives to play a series of deadly children's games for the chance to win £28 million. Pounds. Wow, that's a lot of money. The creator said he wanted to create an allegory, think of it like a symbol, for capitalism and extreme competition which he did very well. We saw Big Brother in full force, we saw the mirage of freedom and the nihilistic view on human life. Two main psychological experiments came to mind through the series, namely the robber's cave experiment, where competition arises from competing of resources rather than individual differences. We saw fan favourites like Ali, yeah you heard me Ali, an actual positive Muslim character, but he was killed off despite being uh, a very nice person. But uh, I guess they were trying to show that betrayal became the name of the game when the competition called for it. Next we have the Lake Wobegon effect, I think I butchered that name but it's the human tendency to overestimate one's achievements and capabilities in relation to others. So each of the 456 players thought they could win, just like some of these people who think they can win the lottery. The lottery! And like we think sometimes that we're gonna win the rat race and become a Jeff Bezos or a Ronaldo, only if we work hard enough. Not only is that a fanciful misconception, but as Howard Zen said, winning the rat race still makes you a rat. So what solutions did the Prophet Muhammad pose so we can avoid being in a real life squid game? Firstly, let's pick out the main issues, namely extreme poverty due to debt and the sick fetishes of the rich as they are the ones who watch the rats clamour over each other yeah. How much did you bet? A million bucks! It's uh, such a beautiful number! 69! <laughs> so there is a mindset that has been created within Islam and insisted upon to avoid such a dystopian eventuality. Let's extract the main vices from the series yeah, you got greed, you got debt and you got capitalism. Unlike other faiths, Islam appreciates the value of money and doesn't dismiss it. For example a hadith in Tirmidhi, for every ummah there is a temptation and the temptation of my ummah is wealth. Another hadith, a time will surely come upon the people when only earnings will be of benefit. And Allama Tibi explains, because without it people may fall into unlawful. Sufyan Thawri said, wealth was once frowned upon by the religious scholars, but now it has become a form of protection and defence for the Muslim. If it were not for this wealth, then the rulers would treat me like a towel and clean with it what they please. And in another narration, there is a danger of poverty leading to unbelief. Okay, let's break this down, yeah? So the Prophet deterred us, firstly, from materialism and greed. Yeah, so let's look at the first thing. Richness does not come from an abundance of wealth. True richness is the richness of the heart. Moderation in spending is half of one's sustenance. So you can see the general kind of tarbiyah that Islam is trying to inculcate within us is that of distancing yourself from extreme materialism. Number two, let's deal with debt, yeah? The average American has a chill $90,460 in debt. Whoever defers the debt of a poverty-stricken person or remits his payment 
Allah will grant him room in his shade it's on the Day of Judgment. Number three, let's move on to fairness. One narration says, pay the labourer his due before his sweat dries. Another one, a truthful and trustworthy trader will be in the company of the prophets, the very truthful and the martyrs. Number four, there are harsh narrations for those who deal with interest. Yeah, we know the ayah of the Quran that it is likened to warring with Allah. Subhanallah. Yeah, that's enough to make our hairs stand on edge and give us goosebumps because who wants to have a war with Allah? Another narration, interest, however much it might accrue, leads in the end to penury. Subhanallah. Then we move on to charity. Yeah, a simple narration. Voluntary charity extinguishes the anger of the Lord and prevents an unpleasant death. So we are indeed living in very interesting times. Yeah. In past civilizations, greed was seen as a deadly vice, not as an admirable quality that makes the economy grow, as capitalism may have us believe. Subhanallah, from these narrations of the Prophet, we can see, we can see how practical Islam and how relevant it is for all ages. Yeah, and all times. This squid game has a lot of profound messages which we can dissect and cover. Alright guys, let's leave it there until next time. Salamu alaikum.